Hello, what is up guys? Evan from Peso Smart Page here. Welcome sa pinabagong episode. Shout out to all the podcast listeners as well. I appreciate you all. Today, let's talk about how philosophy, specifically stoicism, can make you a better investor. Your success in investing is determined by your temperament, not your intelligence necessarily. Warren Buffett said that the most important quality for an investor is temperament, not intellect. You need a temperament that neither derives great pleasure from being with the crowd or against the crowd. Kasi yung main goal ng investing, for example, sa stock market is to buy low and sell high. And then kalimitan ang nangyayari is paligtad. Especially newbies, they buy high and then when the market gets lower, they sell low. So you shouldn't do that. That is one way not to make money or to lose money in the stock market kapag ginawa niyo yun. And he also said na if you're gonna do dumb things when the market drops or falls, then you probably shouldn't own stocks. And that is true. A good example is if you bought a house for 1.5 million pesos. So the next day, a buyer wanted to buy it from you and quotes you 1 million fe- pesos for it. So it won't make any sense to sell, right? The same thing applies to your investments. So given that they're fundamentally sound, then you may just hold on to it for a very long time. And practicing Stoicism can help with this. Temperament is one of the four Stoic virtues. So those four are courage, wisdom, justice, and temperament. And in my opinion, and in the opinion of like other Stoics, temperament can be the hardest to practice because it involves discipline and self-control. The market is the market. You cannot predict 100% what it will do day in and day out. And we can learn a great deal from Epictetus about this. He said that the chief task in life is simply this. To identify and separate matters so that I can say clearly to myself which are externals, not under my control, and which have to do with the choices I actually control. So in short, you just have to separate The things that are within your control and then the things that are out of your control. Where then do I look for good and evil? Not to uncontrollable externals, but within myself to the choices that are my own. So we have to take responsibility. And yes, our control is very limited. But when we focus on those things that we actually control, then we can make a difference. You don't control what the market will do today, tomorrow, 1, 5, 10, 20 years from now. You cannot control inflation, interest rates, geopolitical conflicts, supply chain issues, the weather, or the monetary policy set by the central banks. So what you can control is what you do now, your effort, the time you put in, Researching good and sound investments. Your capital allocation. At what price you'll buy the investment? Is this, the, is this a good time to buy now? Is the market down? And then at what price you'll sell? Are we in the middle of a bull run? Do we have quantitative easing? So are interests, uh, are interest rates low? Is inflation low? So those are the questions that you have to ask. And even those are not within your control. You have to develop your inner calm. Turn down the negative noises inside your head, which is usually fueled by noise and chatter by other market participants. So essentially externals or other people. And some of them are media manipulators. And of course, the mainstream media itself. You, however, have control how you will react to these news or a market downturn or an unexpected rally. Again, sabi ni Warren Buffett, if you're going to do dumb or stupid things, 
when the market falls and it, not even like a a dramatic fall like for example it just went down one percent two percent in one day then you just sold everything and you're gonna say oh i'm i'm done with the stock market then yeah you probably should be <laughs> and you probably shouldn't own stocks or investments the volatility is inherent to these investments that's why we get paid for it that's why we benefit from it because we take on the risk so with that risk comes the reward what forces that will happen in the future it's not a short-term gain then stop caring what other people think stop caring what they do stop caring what they say it's very hard to do initially but i'm sure that you'll get the hang of it what is important is what you do again your effort the time you put in researching good stocks, good investments, good business opportunities. And then worrying accomplishes nothing. It adds no value to your ability to act or solve a problem. A lot of people worry a lot. And we have to stop that habit. So it's just negative. It's not adding any positive positive influence in your life so it just creeps in and takes a lot of your time and attention and then it doesn't really change anything so we can quote marcus aurelius on how to address this so sabi niya, quote today i escaped from anxiety or no i discarded it because it was within me in my own perceptions not outside so this actually within your control and you can you can train yourself and you can exercise this and you can practice this every single day you just have to remind yourself or maybe save this quote for yourself so that you can go back to this every time that you feel anxious go back to this if you're overthinking about the entry price you had yesterday on one of your investments worrying about the price going down much further won't help and it won't change the fact that the prices went down the worrying won't make your investments go up in value just because you're worrying about them it doesn't work that way and lastly all great things take time so you have to start small be patient, stay the course, and accumulate. Don't underestimate the power of compounding interest. So, majority of Warren Buffett's... How much is his net worth? Like, $100 billion net worth. He accumulated majority of it on his 62nd birthday. Although, yes, he's like 91, 92 years old. But yeah, he only accumulated a small portion of his net worth from the time that he started investing when he was like a teenager up until 61, 62. And then the compounding interest kicked in, like the big gains kicked in after his 62nd birthday. So think about that. 1% better every single day. And let's end this with a quote from Seneca. He said that, quote, If you don't know the port you're sailing to, no wind is favorable. So you have to create a plan, strategize, execute the plan, and stick to it. Again, all great things take time. However, if the facts change, as Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger said, you have to be adaptable enough to change your mind. You can modify your plan and execute on it again. Your stubbornness won't be of any help if something fundamentally changed in the market. If the business you're invested in or the stock you're holding fundamentally changed. So yep, hopefully this helped. And hopefully you learned something. We are going to end the video here. Thanks very much for watching and listening. I'll see you on the next one. Always remember, 
Be best smart.